What does it mean to be born again? Well, I'm going to show you from the Bible. You got to watch out for any kind of a quote unquote ministry that doesn't tell you to turn someplace in the Bible and they start to give their own opinions. I want to show you what the Bible says about the new birth. John chapter 3, beginning in verse 1. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? See, he was thinking of physical birth. That's not what Jesus was talking about. Verse 5, Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. There's an old saying, it goes something like this, Born once, die twice. Born twice, die once. Yeah, that's very true. If you are physically born, and you become spiritually born again, you receive the new birth, you become a new creature in Christ Jesus, then you will only have to die one time, maybe even not at all if you're there for the catching up. Okay, that's a whole other issue. But the point is, you will live forever in eternity. If you are born of the flesh one time, and you never get born again, spiritually speaking, then you will die an old age of a car accident, sickness, whatever else, you will die one day. All die. There's not anybody that lives forever as far as you know, a physical mortal man here on the earth. Everybody dies. You'll die once, and then for all of eternity, it will be eternal death. It'll be a horrible, horrible time. But let's continue here. Verse 8. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth. So is, so is every one that is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things be? Jesus answered and said unto him, Art thou a master of Israel, and knowest not these things? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, We speak that we do know, and testify that we have seen, and ye receive not our witness. If I have told you earthly things, and ye believe not, how shall ye believe if I tell you of heavenly things? And that's exactly what a lot of people do. Well, I have questions about the Bible. Is it, doesn't this verse contradict that verse? And can you prove to me from science? And can you do? It's all earthly things. They don't like the idea of the new birth because it says that there's something wrong with your first physical birth. You're born into sin. You are a sinner. In fact, you're so rotten that you can't save yourself. Jesus had to die on the cross. God manifest in the flesh. Comes down, dies on the cross to pay for your sins. Continuing. Verse 11. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, we speak that we do know and testify that we have seen and ye receive not our witness. I already read that. And verse 12 as well. We'll just read it again. If I have told you earthly things and ye believe not, how shall ye believe if I tell you of heavenly things? And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven. How can the Son of Man be there talking to him on the earth, and yet he's in heaven at the same time? Because you see, Jesus Christ is God. Holy, completely God. Not a third of God, not one of three, the second member, that he is holy, completely God. His physical body is on the earth. His soul is in heaven. That's what the Bible teaches. Verse 14, And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Have you lifted up Jesus Christ in your life? Or is Jesus Christ some leader of some religion that you reject? Who is Jesus Christ to you? Some primitive story that you just laugh at and mock? Is that what you think of the Lord Jesus Christ? Why don't you lift Him up to His proper position as King of kings and Lord of lords, as Creator and sustainer of all life. 
Verse 15, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. How about that? Eternal life. Verse 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. You say, well, you've been condemning me. You're judging me because you called me a sinner. Yes, exactly. Because that, knowing that you're a sinner, will point you to a Savior. It's not just condemn, condemnation. You're a sinner. You're going to hell. There's no chance of you getting out. I'd be wicked if I was preaching that. That's not what I'm preaching. I am preaching, you're a sinner. Jesus died for your sins. He loved you enough to die in your place. And He's prepared a place in heaven for you. you say, what do I have to give up? Your self-righteousness. You're never going to get into heaven with your self-righteousness. Thinking that you're a good person. Thinking that your works can save you. Thinking that your religion can save you. You have to give up on yourself. That's what Nicodemus' problem was. He didn't want to give up on himself. Verse 18, He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, that light is come into the world, and men loved darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. Hmm. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. You know why most people don't want to watch a video like this? Because their deeds are evil. You're a drunkard, you're a profane, swearing, cussing, dirty joke, blaspheming God, drug addict, sex pervert, watching all kinds of filthy things. And you don't like it when a preacher like myself calls you out for your sins, do you? No, you don't. You see... I am born again. That's why I can stand here. I have a perfect standard in this book. And I can stand here and I can judge your sins according to the Scriptures. I can't judge you according to my preferences. I can judge you according to what the Scriptures say. When the Bible condemns something and I see you doing it, I can say, you're in sin. You're on your way to hell right now. I can say that. That's why a lot of people hate preachers like me. You'll see it. Look at all the videos exposing Brian Denlinger. There's all kinds of stuff out there. People hate me because I expose sin. There aren't many preachers that do it anymore. Most of them don't have the guts to expose sin and to preach hard against sin because they're too worried about filling the pews of their church building and getting the tithe money. That's the whole thing. But you see, here's the whole point. I will preach hard against sin because I want to break down your self-righteous pride so that you come to Jesus Christ to get saved. Truly, genuinely born again. Not a false profession of faith. Not a false thing of, I'm going to church someplace and therefore I think I'm going to get in. I think I'll be alright. I think I'm going to be okay. I can't tell you how many people I've witnessed to and you get right down to it and they say, you know, I think I'm going to be alright. If you die tonight, would you go to heaven or hell? Ah, I think I'd go to heaven. I think I'm okay. There's no thinking about it. You better get saved. You don't guess at your eternity. You need to get born again. 1 Peter chapter 1. You say, well, well how can I believe you? There's this one preacher says this and the other preacher says that. And all preachers think that they know what they're talking about. And every preacher, and there's all these denominations, and blah, 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 blah. Okay, what's the secret? 1 Peter, Peter chapter 1, verse 23 through 25. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the Word of God, lowercase w, it's a written standard, by the Word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. For all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man as the flower of grass. The grass withereth, and the flower thereof falleth away. But the word of the Lord endureth forever. And this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. I'm preaching to you a book that's over 400 years old. The King James Bible. 
over 400 years this thing has been here on this earth, popular, still selling, being printed into the millions and millions of copies every year. Okay, I can't say every year. It's been hundreds of millions of copies down through the centuries. I'll say it that way. Certainly thousands, hundreds of thousands of copies every single year. Still the most available Bible in, on the entire planet, the King James Bible. All the others are counterfeits. They try to catch up to the world's best-selling book. This is the number one bestseller in all time. Never been equaled, never been copied, or never been surpassed. I'll say it that way. But here's the whole point. Right now, out here in nature, there's some really beautiful things. There's some nice leaves on the trees. I can't really see any right around here, but there's wildflowers everywhere. But you know what? In a few months, they're going to be gone. In a few months, these leaves are going to be off these trees. This isn't going to be a beautiful waterfall flowing nice water here. It's going to be frozen. The rocks are eroding. Everything breaks down. That's called a law of science. The second law of thermodynamics. The law of entropy. Okay? Things break down. They get worse with time. Evolution says, no, we can't accept that. It has to get better. You see, man started off primitive and he's gotten better. No, that's not the truth. Man started off good and he gets worse. So bad that the Creator has to come in and say, I'll make a way for you to come to heaven. You say, well, okay, I can get to heaven then. I can, I, I'll just believe what this says about Jesus dying on the cross. And Okay, I guess I'll just believe that. Oh no, because that's not the new birth. You must be born again. You must come to the end of your self-righteous pride. You must come to the end of thinking that you're a good person. And until you do that, you're on your way to hell. You will die in your sins. It's just as plain and simple as that. Let me tell you something. Very few people have ever experienced the new birth. Very few. I've been saved now for quite a few years. And I'll tell you what, most of my life, I was a false professing Christian church going I was a good person don't you know but I hadn't experienced the new birth I would read this Bible and it seemed foreign to me I couldn't relate to anybody in it now that I'm born again now that I'm saved I can read this book and it's just like their family to me I can see their struggles I can see their pain I can see the joy that comes and I it, there's fellowship there with a book that's written 400 years ago about events that took place way in the past and it was translated, by the way. I say written, translated 400 years ago, but written almost 2,000 years ago, the New Testament, and further back than that, uh, the Old Testament. It's an amazing book. You say, well, I think I'm just going to, you know, I, I'll make it with my good works, or I'll make it with being a good person. No, you'll make it by the Word of God. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the Word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. The grass... Grass withereth, the flower fadeth, but the Word of God doesn't. This book's going to be here to tell you how you must be born again, to, how, to tell you how to receive the new birth. Are you going to get saved? Do you want to be born again? Are you tired of the life that you have? Do you want to start over? Do you want a new life? Come to Jesus Christ. He'll give you a new life. I didn't say come to church. I didn't say come and get baptized. I didn't say come and take up the sacraments or come and read the catechism. I said come to Jesus Christ. Finally, we're going to go to 1 Timothy chapter 1. 1 Timothy chapter 1, I'll read another verse of Scripture here. First Timothy chapter 1, verse 12 through 15. And I thank Christ Jesus our Lord, who hath enabled me, for the, that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry, who was before a blasphemer and a persecutor and injurious, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant with faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom 
I am chief. Greatest Christian that ever lived could lower his pride enough to say, I'm a sinner. In fact, the chiefest of sinners. I'm not a good person. I'm a horrible person. And I need the Lord Jesus Christ to come into my life and save me and make me a new creature in Christ Jesus. I want to be born again. That's what the Apostle Paul said. That's where I had to come to as a man. I had to come to a, a place where I said, you know what? I'm not a good man. I've gone to church all my life. I'm a good, I thought I was a good person. But you know what? I'm not really that good when I start to examine myself according to the pages of this book. And I start to realize what this could cost me if I don't make the right decision. And I start to think about eternity. I've seen a lot of people die over the years. You have too. You've seen grandparents die. My grandmother right now, she's 100 years old. She's on her deathbed. Probably a few days to live. You say, well, she's lived a good life. What is good is life if you don't know Jesus Christ? 100 years of life. Most people never get to 100 years. But if you do, and you've never met Jesus Christ, what was it all for? You go and you die, and you end up in hell for all of eternity? Even the very best life isn't worth it. You need to be born again. You need to know for sure where you're going to go when you die. And if you don't know for sure, then I suggest you get it worked out right now. You get down on your knees and you call upon the name of the Lord. You say, God, I want to know. I don't want to take the words of Brian Denlinger, me. I don't want to take his words. I want to get that book, this King James Bible, and I want to read it for myself. I want to know. I want to experience the new birth. I'm tired of this life of sin that I have. I'm sick and tired of having to wonder and having to say, I don't really know for sure. I don't... Forget all that stuff. You can know that you're going to go to heaven when you die. You can know that. You can be born again. You can have the fellowship of the Spirit that comes upon a true saved Christian. And you'll get around other truly saved Christians and you'll just feel that connection just like their family. And you'll have great spiritual fellowship. And by the same token, you'll get around other people that profess to be Christians and you'll just all of a sudden start going, I don't think so. <laughs> They're not saved. You'll feel it. You'll know. You'll know who's born again and who isn't. I pray that you make the right decision. Thank you for watching.